Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for this service. I thank you for what you are doing right now at this moment where we are all here together. I thank you for these precious men and women of God. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you're doing a refining work in each and every one of us from the inside out, Lord. Let's just all right now, let's lift up our hands and just repeat this after me. Jesus, here I am. Make the things of heaven more real to me than the things of this world. Burn everything out of me that is not of you. And I yield even more to the person of the Holy Spirit, to the promptings from heaven. I have in all areas of my life. Let me have ears to hear. Let me have eyes to see. Let me have a heart to receive all that the Spirit of God is showing me, instructing me, teaching me in the name of Yeshua. I'm born of the Spirit. I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm led by the Spirit. I love your word. I receive your instruction. And I receive your correction. I love your word. It brings life to me. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Amen. Awesome. So, um... Again, who's excited that they are born, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit of fire? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, never the same, right? Never the same. Again, I just want to jump in now because we have a lot to discuss with. You guys must have all received one of these scripts, soul winning scripts, um, and also a sheet that gives you all the scripture references um, in case you don't have time to write it down or you need to go back later. They're going to all be on that paper of the ones I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice. I'm losing it. Not a good idea to worship and share. <clears throat> Where did I put? I had a bottle. Um, is it over there, Hannah? Thank you so much. I might need another one, too. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. So today, we're talking about sharing the gospel. We're talking about the power that the gospel has and the power of the salvation prayer and how we can do that and what that looks like. And what I'm going to share with you guys is this, is this is a tool. This is something that anyone can use. This isn't just the right way. This isn't, but this is a good way, and it's a way that I've seen the most um, work and I've seen the most out of it. But any, but because I know with this subject, there's a lot of controversy. There's a lot of stuff, and I'm not here to be involved in that whatsoever. I am here to share my experiences, my testimonies, and what, I, what I've seen, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit that I have seen. So, um, so you guys should have gotten those two things. Um, and who knows when we leave this earth, what is the one thing we bring with us? People, souls, that is the only thing. You can't bring your furniture, can't bring your flat screen, can't bring your smart device, <laughs> Xbox, no. It's just people. People are the ones that come with you. Um, again, there's a lot of causes out there, a lot of great ministries, a lot of great things that is going on right now on this earth. Um, and... Um, there's many, you know, like we have Billy Graham, we have these great men and women of God who are coming to the forefronts. Even now there's songs that are being written about the harvest and these, and they're young people. I was just looking it up last night and we see this getting stronger, and stronger, especially in the young people of this, the, um, the giftings of evangelism and, um, what I've seen it a lot out there, especially on social media and online, it's getting stronger and stronger, which is awesome. So praise the Lord. Um, Again, there's many who start off right, you know, there's many who start right, but finish wrong. And so, or actually never finish at all, a lot of times. 
when God's calling them to do something or calling them to soul winning, you know, because the enemy hates that. The enemy, again, like I'll share with you with some of my testimonies, the enemy despises us doing this and us going out and us preaching the gospel and us speaking forth the word of God and bringing people to heaven. So, um, again, at one point or another, all of us were going to hell at one point or another. But what happened? Then God, right? God came. Again, you guys probably have tons of stories and testimonies that are so powerful and so just just in the, to us fathoming, it's just, wow, that God showed up for you like never before. Again, through a person, through a situation, again, through a location, the, God met you and spoke to you and you experienced his love, true love, real love for the first time. And um, again, but Jesus came and showed up for all of us. Again, in order to have a true heart for the lost, your eyes have to be fixed on the things above. Your eyes have to be fixed to heaven. Again, it's so easy, especially now, to get distracted and get to get swayed and off track. But again, I'm telling you, if you don't have your eyes on the end goal of eternity, again, I've, I say this all the time to the worship team, we're practicing eternity. When we're up here, it's not just for now. It's not just for a few years. This is what we're doing forever. So I said, if you're not doing it right up here, then you're not going to do it right at all. So that's something we're doing by winning souls and having a heart and eyes focused towards the kingdom of heaven is, you know what? The, the people of this earth are important to Jesus. Again, we may look at people, and I'll talk about this later, about my personal testimony with asking the Lord for this, but asking the Lord to for us, for our own hearts, to have a passion for the lost, to have to have brokenness for the lost, to, to want to have this such strong desire to see them saved and serving God. And, and, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll share that later. But again, in order to have a true heart for the lost, again, our eyes have to be fixed towards heaven. Psalms 139, he knows you more than you know yourself. You are on his mind. Again, so many of us will be like, oh, I could never do that. And I'll share with that too about me. Or I could never do this or that's, that's for other people. And, you know, the Lord knows me. No, the Lord knows you better than you know yourself. And he knows, it's like that scripture um, about the sand on the, on the shore. Just think if you would have gotten a bucket and you filled it with sand and you'd count every single grain of sand, who knows you'd be there, I wouldn't see you for a while <laughs> at church. You'd be stuck counting that. That's, that's how much the Lord knows about us, is uh, that, the whole bucket of sand on the shore. So, um, again, who knows children, right? We all know have children or have siblings or cousins or whatever. You would never ask a toddler, go cook me a five-course meal. That would be scary. <laughs> that would be very dangerous, right? No, you would know, okay, that right now he or she is not at that stage right now, you know. But, you know, my older one is. My older one could probably, even my older one probably could even make an egg on the stove. But you would know that, oh, I'm not going to tell my toddler to do this. The Lord knows the same things with us. We're all on different levels. We're all on different maturity levels. And he knows, he knows us so, so well. Again, um, so many testimonies I want to share with you guys. Um, but one thing I know for sure is he tells us to go out and what? Preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Again, no matter who you are or what you do, God has called you to be an evangelist. Again, a soul winner. Again, and that's for certain, to preach the gospel. Everyone say, preach the gospel. And I'm a little taller, so I need this up a little bit of a hair. Oh, wrong one. You can leave that. It's okay. It's all people problems. All the time. Okay. There we go. Um, so, yes. Again, who likes, 
who has a job? Who's a job here, right? Who, this is for me too. I love when my boss tells me, Josiah, Miss Carolyn, I need you to do this and this and this, and this is how you do it, and this is the time I need it done by, and here's the tools for it. Please go and do it. I love when my boss do that, does that. I'm not trying to guess what they're wanting. I'm not thinking what are their expectations, all this. No, and that's what they do at Chick-fil-A. They give it to you. So they, I love that when my boss does. That's what Jesus is doing to us through this scripture. He's telling us the exact what exactly we need to do and how to do it and what to do and everything. So he gives us an outline of how to share the gospel and how to um, share this with every creature and every nation. Um, so God has already told us in his word, in his book. So no matter, again, where you're at, where you're placed, who you are, what the plan, what the, the Lord's plan is over your life entails, whatever it may be for certain, you know that you are supposed to preach the gospel, okay? That is for certain. Okay, if there was a police officer, imagine this, if there was a police officer or if there was a doctor on every corner, every, every light, every street light, just imagine a doctor, police officer, every corner, every, every corner you turn, oh, there's a doctor, there's a police officer, Wow. Even if they were there, again, every street corner, there still lies the ills of humanity, no matter what. The evilness and wickedness of this world would still flood the streets. Again, that would not resolve anything in our society because it's not the root of the problem. It's not. The root of the problem can only, can only change the only way you can change the heart of a man, woman, or child, or a nation is through the proclamation of the gospel. That is the only way. Amen. The gospel bypasses the head and pierces the heart. That's the thing with the gospel. And that's how some people have problems receiving, grabbing onto it, is they're all in their head. And I tell the worship team, that's the biggest thing when you come onto the team, is immediately you need to be out of your head. Because then... It's, you get hindered and all this different stuff. So the word bypasses the head and pierces the heart. <clears throat> John 3.3 3 says, when someone is born again, again in John 3.3, 3, before I read it, I just thought about this. When you're born again or when someone is born again, you know you're born again. They know they're born again. Amen? <laughs> they know it. And just a quick story about my personal testimony is I was I went to a VBS. I was around five years old, or I might have been six, just turning or about to turn six. And I was at VBS, and we had the theme of that VBS was the twelve tribes. Who's heard of that? Where does that come from? Right. So, and I got put in the Joseph tribe. So when you register. They just randomly put you, you know, in different tribes. So I got the tribe of Joseph. They gave us this bandana, and it had wheat on the little, and it said Joseph, and we had to wear it. They are like, Joseph tribe, come. You know, and you had to follow. So it was that VBS, and we had to pay with shekels for our snacks. It was cool. So, um, yeah, so, the, so at the end, you know, every day of VBS, they have an altar call. The pastor comes up, gives opportunity. Every time I was like, oh, no, I'm not. I was, I was scared. And so then the last day comes, and I wasn't going to do it. And he stops, and he's still waiting. He's like, I'm waiting for somebody else. I know there's somebody else that's thinking. That's not, and I was sitting there, and I slowly, my hand literally, you thought it was like slow motion, like in a movie where it's like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like slowly and then my teacher's like him and then um so he's like oh come on up he's very southern and he's like come on up and so I come up I was the only one that day yeah I was the only one and so I come up and he's like what's your name and I was like Josiah and I just remember like automatically feeling just the love of God through him when he said repeat after me and he said the prayer and I said after him and I remember 
during it, I was like feeling this just, this electricity, this fire. And I remember right after he prayed for me, I walked down, I ran to the bathroom, and I started just sobbing. And the teacher came, was like, are you okay? And then she prayed for me afterwards. So then years passed by, and I'm 16, 15, around there. And I remember, this happens to a lot of people I know, especially my age, where you were probably raised in this or you're, you were born again at a very young age, you know, but you, you've lost your sense of your own personal relationship, and that's never stuck out to you yet. So I was in that kind of area, and I was on, in my room, and I remember I just joined the worship team, and I was, I went on the floor, and this song played off my worship list. It was just playing in my room, and it hit me, and the Lord told me, go on your knees, and I went on my knees, and he said, lift up your hands, and I lift up my hands, and he said, I want you to rededicate your life for a personal relationship with me, not through any teacher, not through your parents, not through, you know, your family members, your friends. I want you to rededicate your life to me right now between me and you, and at that point, I said it, <clears throat> I said the prayer, and I cried out to him, and I asked for forgiveness, and I told him, I want a new, I want a fresh new encounter, this is a new season of my life, and I totally, after that, the rest is history, so that was my personal testimony of getting saved and born again, and I know there's so many stories and so many testimonies, and it's awesome, um, but when you read the prayer, when you read the prayer, you know, again, what has happened to you is real. It was real. You, know, you can't deny it. You can't, no matter if someone is holding you a check, you can't, you'd be like, no, it was real. It'd be like, just say it was not real. Just, you know, try to persuade you, no, it was real. There was a story of this woman who shared in school, right? This blows my mind. I thought about this. She was a vacuum cleaner saleswoman. She was the top of her line, just like the top. You know, she was going out just making big bucks, just selling out. You know, even she won out the women's division, and then she won out the men's division, and then all time. And so she was just knocking on doors because she had no appointment. So she's just knocking on doors. She knocks on this one woman's door, and she opens. And then she's like, can I take an hour of your time? to go through this with you. So she's like, yeah. So they go through it. She get, buys a vacuum. After the lady, she's about to head out the door, the lady tells her, hey, you know, I've given you an hour of my time. Can I, can you give me a minute of your time? And she's like, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. She's like, yes, yeah, sure. I rebuke this right now in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> And she goes, yes, yeah, sure. Um, I'd be happy to because you just bought three vacuums, sure, right? <laughs> so, um, so then she's like, I want to tell you something. Do you know that God loves you and he has a great, wonderful plan for your life? And do you know, are you saved? She's like, yes, I'm saved. And this woman, she was a church organist on staff, paid to play organ every Sunday. She was there every Sunday, paid on staff. Every time the doors were open, she was there in the seat or there playing organ. She was there, faithful, loyal, you know, such a great servant. You would think, that's a Christian, right? You know, that's a Christian. She was never saved. Never said the prayer, never confessed. Been on staff for 20 years, never got saved, and that church never had given an altar call or explained it or anything. So she, the woman asked her this. She's like, yes, I am. You know, I love the Lord. I play organ. I'm there every Sunday. She goes, well, have you said the prayer, and have you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart? And she's like, oh, no. And so she prayed that prayer for her, and after that moment, she felt a change and she was smiling and laughing, and she gave that lady a hug, and now she has done great things for the kingdom of God. And she's, you know, a pastor and has just touched thousands and thousands of people and have trained in this. 
um, trained tons of churches and ministries and gone all over to share and teach people how to do this. So I thought that was really awesome. Um, again, everyone must be born again. Everyone must be born again to go to heaven. <clears throat> and when you're born again, you know it. It's real. It's, it's something you can't explain or can't, can't comprehend, but it's so real, so tangible. It's like nothing ever before. Um, again, in Acts 2.21, it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Again, how do you know when someone's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? How would you know? Is it by wearing a bumper sticker that says, honk for Jesus? Is it, <laughs> it sorry, um, that's good and all, that's good. Um, you know, there's so many ways and so many things we see in people. No, it is the power, again, it is by your lifestyle. It is by your lifestyle. Again, it is the power. It is the power. It is the power. It's not our wise words and all that we know and all that we've learned and all these things, which is good, but it's not about that. It's truly not about that. It's about the power of the, of the Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit. It's through the proclamation and the power of the gospel is how we know. Again, there's this other story. The Lord's just putting all these stories <laughs> um, about an atheist. And this person, somebody in my group was soul winning, came with me and was telling me the story. They were at a grocery store. And they go, and they, they had to use the restroom really bad. They were on a road trip. And they're like, let's stop at this store. So they're hurrying up to go to the restroom. They, like, really have to go. Who knows, when you really got to go, you're like, get out of my way. So they're like, get out of my way, got to go. And they, he had to stop because they were putting carts in the door. And the carts got jammed in the door, so he couldn't get in. And all of a sudden, he sees this man standing there like this. And he walks over to him, and the Holy Spirit says, go get that man saved. So he walks over to him. He goes, excuse me, has anyone ever told you God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? And he goes like this, why, yes, yes, I do know that. And, he's, and you know what he does? What they tell us, and what I'll talk to you later, is keep reading the script. Don't stop. Keep reading. So he goes, well, let me share with you what the Holy Bible reads. And starts reading the scripture. And then he's like, would you know, if you were to die this very night, would you go to heaven? Why, yes, I would. And then, oh, that's great, awesome. You're always supposed to do that. That's great, awesome. Well, can I ask you this? On a scale of one to five, how red hot on fire for the Lord are you? How would you say Oh, I would say, I would say a strong two. I'm like, strong two? A strong two. And um, <laughs> so if someone doesn't say five, you know, okay, we need to keep praying. So um, <laughs> um, so he keeps reading it. And he gets, he reads all the scriptures to this man, and he gets to the prayer. He starts crying. And he looks up, and he just starts crying. He goes, and because he kind of stopped, this guy kind of stopped to be like, is he, you know, what's going on? And he goes, no, keep reading it. And he keeps reading it. He finishes it. He says the prayer, and he goes, and he finally admits, he's like, because he, he admitted to the man, he's like, I was a, I'm a theologian. I've traveled the word, I teach seminars and stuff on, you know, the books, books of the Bible and all this stuff, but I've never been truly saved. I've never felt this before. 
And so, and there was this one lady who was cleaning, this is another story, there was this lady who was cleaning this hotel, and there was this girl who was in the hotel. She's like, I'm going to go talk to that lady. And so she talks to her. Um, and she starts with the whole script, and, um, and the, lady's, the lady cleaning is like, I'm an atheist. And the girl is like, oh, what do I do? You know, oof, ouch, okay. You know, it like gut punches you, especially when you're new. You're like, you're like, oh. But you know what she does? She keeps reading the script. She keeps reading and sharing the gospel. She doesn't stop. She reads all these scriptures to this lady who claims she's an atheist. And the lady gets saved. And she says she was wrong at the end of that prayer. And she says that what she was believing was a lie. And what she was believing was false. And that this, this prayer that she spoke, again, she felt love like never before. Again, she was abused. And she was hurt as a child. And her mom and dad would beat her and cut her and do all this stuff to her. And she said, right when you were saying this prayer, I experienced true love for the first time. And this was an atheist this was an atheist who wanted nothing to do with Jesus or the word of God or anything. But I'm telling you, that's the power that the word has. That's the power that this contains to pierce the heart of every woman, man, and child. Amen. And let me ask you this. Do you think the power of God is only supposed to touch believers or do you think the power of God are here to touch every man and woman and child? I just received that. This, it's not just for believers. It's not just for people. I know when we're on the streets, you want to go towards people that look approachable. You want to go towards people that look, oh, they receive this. No, the gospel, the, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ is for the crack house to the penthouse. It's not towards a group of people, towards a society, towards towards anything. It's towards every tongue and every nation. Amen. Hey, Alan, is it any possible way I can have this a little up? I'm just, <clears throat> um, just a tad. Um, another awesome thing I wanted to share with you guys is having a lifetime soul go goal. And I have mine. And mine's um, 1,000. Um, I, then let me explain myself. There'd be, people would be like, that's not a lot. <laughs> but when I started this, I was very, very um, doubtful. And so I was like, 1,000. And at school, I was like, excuse me, 1,000? You should be saying 2 million. <laughs> um, so, so to right now while we're talking, think about that. Think about what would be my lifetime soul goal. Um, and you think big. We'll talk about that later. Think big in this aspect. Um, again, and when I go up to people and I share this with them, I never say my name at the start. I never introduce myself. I go straight to this. I go straight with, um, I don't go, hey, my name is Josiah Plummer, and I'm sorry, do you have a couple seconds? No. Again, I am not there to introduce myself. I'm there to introduce them to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about to seek and to save all that are lost. That is what it's about. Again, that's what it's all about. Um, I have another story, but I think I might wait. Um, Another thing with this is when you, again, and we're going to go through this step by step at the end. When you go through this, um, how should I say this? I go all the way every time. Um, I, get, I get them, I read the prayer, ask them, how, let's get you baptized in the Holy Spirit. What is your name? What is your number? Let's get you plugged into a church. You know, going all the way. And some people want to read this 
and they'll, the person will say one thing, and they're like, okay, bye. Again, if we never tell them, they'll never know. So you keep reading, keep reading the script. Again, this is a thing um, that I was taught. Is you keep the main thing the main thing. And that helped me a lot. It's okay, just keep the main thing the main thing. And that is the word of God. It's not your words. Again, some people would come in there because <laughs> I'd be in random groups. I did soul winning consecutively every week for two years, once a week. And you, you get grouped with all sorts of people. And some people would go in there and I was like, they told me what to do. I'm like, yep, I'm just going to do what, exactly what they tell me. These people will come in, they want to be big shots, and they want to have a teaching, and they want to share, you know, this whole thing. Then they want to get to the prayer, and they never won one soul that day. <laughs> and the people that just read this, they would win 100, 50, 200, you know, because they just stuck to the word of God. That's all we need is the word of God. You know, it's not some long, drawn-out speech, ranting and raving, you know, bunny trails. You keep the main thing the main thing. And you give them the opportunity. Give them, it's like a waitress coming up to Miss Audrey, being like, this is what we have on the menu, right? We got this. Oh, this is a real good special. It is so good. We sell out every day. You better order it if you want to get it. You know, you better, it's really, really good. And then Miss Audrey's like, you know what? I want that. And you're like, bye, I'm off the clock. And it gets sold out. Or, or she just disappears. If we are not holding the opportunity and being like reading this and then being carrying out, being like, Let, yes, let's pray now. Let's finishing, finishing out this because a lot of people will cop out. You know, we're reading what the scripture says, but then you have to say the prayer with them. You know, because some people will just read this to them and be like, okay, bye. And there was no prayer, you know. There was no, you know, you want to give them, hold out that meal in front of them so they, they can receive it. They can eat it. Miss Audrey's hungry. She wants to eat it. It's great. It's so super good. Um, uh, I thought about this too this morning. Imagine with me um, for a second again. And it's already happening now. It's happening Again, there's a new wave of Christians and men and women of God, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and power, you know, that are taking back the media, that are taking back this culture. Again, I always tell the worship team, let's be culture changers. Let's be culture changers. Let's not slink back. Let's not hide out. Let's not be afraid and be like, we need to go to the mountains. That is, oh. That irritates me so much. Again, how are people going to know if they're not told? That hits me. How are people going to know if they are not told, if they are not shown? And we all want to hide out in the Rockies. We want to hide out in, you know, no man's land. What good is that going to do? You know, you've received this amazing gift. You've received this love like no other that has changed your life forever, for eternity, and you don't want to share that with anybody? You don't want people to experience that and to be set free? To be set free, to be loose from bounds that they've been carrying, weights, you know, of depression, of sicknesses, of illnesses? You don't want to see that for them? That's selfish. And that's not what Jesus did. Jesus died for you. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jesus. So why would you do that? <clears throat> but there is, again, I, I get so excited, especially I'm a big arts person. I love the arts. I love anything in the arts, music, movies, theater, um, marketing, all that kind of stuff. I love that stuff. So when I see directors, actors, script writers, producers coming out, and not going to the right or to the left, staying on the mark. Imagine this. Imagine, and it's already happening, which is amazing. Movie theaters. People are getting saved in movie theaters. People are being set free, healed, delivered in movie theaters, in theaters. So this wave of revival is happening. Again, we can say, oh, the enemy has this, the enemy has that. No, the light is coming, and it's here. And imagine this next generation following in that same step, carrying it over in the media especially. Man. 
in, yes, they're infiltrating, got that word. They're infiltrating and taking back this world. Again, stadiums, arenas, fe- fields. What just happened um, at the, I'm going to butcher the name, Yingling Center? Yingling Center? That's an arena that was filled with worship and praise and prayer and interceding and pastors. And, I mean, and it's, it started, it's, it's been happening and it's amazing. It's awesome. Um, Again, getting people saved, set free, hitting every area of our world like a tidal wave. I just see this tidal wave of God's power, like, bah, and you can't escape it. Ah, ah, woo. Um, <laughs> I just see people, ah, woo. Um, amen. And this is an important piece too. Romans 2, 4 says, it's the goodness that leads people to his repentance to repentance. <clears throat> it's his goodness. People aren't getting saved because God doesn't want people getting saved because they're fearful, they're scared, or they're condemned. No. God wants people to be saved because he, they love him and they've experienced that love. It's like it's like with a child. You you instruct your child, you discipline your child, but you do it because you love them. It's the same thing with God. God takes great care of his children. God loves his children. God loves his church. God loves his bride. You don't come after the bride. You don't come after a son and daughter of the Lord. That's why anybody, again, we share this here, anybody that's in ministry, anyone that is out there, I don't ever say anything about them. I don't say anything about them. No matter what they're doing, I leave that up to God because Especially these people are saying this stuff. They don't even know the people. They don't even, and again, it's, it's, the, it's this culture of Christianity. It's like they talk about the cancel culture, but the Christians are doing cancel culture all the time. I see it on my feed. I'm like, what? It? And that's why I don't have social media anymore. I have Facebook five-minute timer. That's it. But it's like these Christians are just bashing other Christians and then they're doing it to them and then they're doing it back to them. And it's just constant, just a, and again, we got work to do. We got people to raise up. We got children to raise. We got, we have churches to run, to be run. And we have people to save. (laughs) And we're here on the computer nitpicking Billy and Nellie's nitpicking back Billy. (sighs) Nellie and Billy. Willy nilly. <laughs> uh, Willy nilly. So, I don't know who's gone soul winning here. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. Soul winning. Have you ever gone on the streets or perfect? So, out of you guys, um, and especially I can say this too. Um, when you pray with somebody, you know, and you're, you're there with them and you're, man, my throat. <clears throat> um, you pray with them. You can instantly feel when they say the prayer and they receive, Lord, you see the love and goodness fill them. You see their, their um, character change, their, their demeanor, their countenance instantly change. It's kind of like, oh, like shocking, you know, you see it. And um, that's because they're filled with the goodness and love of Christ. The goodness is what leads to repentance, the goodness of God. The goodness of God leads to repentance. The goodness of God leads to repentance. The goodness of God leads to repentance. Yes, it is not... It's not anything else but his goodness and love that leads us to repentance. Hmm. Yes. And I had, sorry, I'm, I'm just getting things of when I've been on the streets. They, there was this lady, and she just hugged me. I was like, oh. 
<laughs> um, and um, she was like, ah, just crying, weeping. And I just sat there and just hugged her. And um, she said, I never had a father. And the stepfather I did have abused me. And she said, when you were reading that prayer, I felt like you were my father reading this to me. And when I hugged you, after she hugged me, she's like, I felt the father's love. And um, then I started crying. <laughs> then she gave me a tissue out of her purse. Um, <laughs> oh, man, the stories. Um, yeah, so that's what, and again, it comes down to praying, Lord, just give me, give me the passion for these people. Give me the love that you have for them. Let me see them the way you see them. And just, I had to pray that over and over, because before, whoo, I'll get to that. Um, I didn't want nothing to do with it. Um, again, right now, I just pray right now, Jesus, for the whole entire world, for the state, the country of America, the state of Florida, Tampa Bay, right now, Brandon, again, they just get an impact right now, a full collision with the Lord's goodness, with the love of God, with the presence of the Holy Spirit right now, just hitting, 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 hitting the power, the presence, the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit to just come and pour down right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Again, our Heavenly Father is not a child abuser. He does not abuse his children. He teaches us. He teaches us. He disciplines us, but like I said, he takes great care of us. He protects us. He provides for us. And I thought about this too, because not only people that are getting saved for the first time, but recomm recommitments are so important too, are just as important and powerful. You see these people that have gotten so hurt and so cold towards the faith or towards church or whatever it may be and it's like you look into their eyes and you're saying this prayer because that's one thing I do is when I say the prayer to them I look them in the eye and I just always pray in my mind Lord let let this touch them let this love flood their hearts right now fill them up right now in the name of Jesus and I'm looking them in the eye and you can tell whatever facade they had, whatever was blinding them, whatever was binding them, whatever whatever was just holding them back, I see it just breaking out of their eyes. And then the prodigals and the ones who have ran away or the ones that have um, been scared or just had no one to love them or no one to, to protect them, you know, seeing them say this prayer again, is just so powerful and so important, just like as if someone was getting it for the first time. Um, yes, a lot of shame and sin, the burden of shame and sin just leaving them. Um, and I want to get into this. A lot of you might say, even watching online, might say, well, Josiah... That's not my personality. I'm shy. I'm timid. I, I can't do that. I, you know what? Dallas is called to do that. That's her gifting. That's not my gifting. She is called to um, preach the gospel. Okay. Let me say a couple things to that. Because this is what I had to be corrected on and, and disciplined on by the Lord. You need to take that personality of yours. You need to throw, throw it on the altar, plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, and ask God to give you the personality he has tailor-made for you. That's what you need to do if that's what you're feeling right now. That's right. Again, and the personality he'll give you won't be a rude one, won't be an obnoxious one, won't be a religious one. 
2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love, of a sound mind. And amplified, it says, Tibbenness. He's not giving you a spirit of tibbenness. I thought that was really cool. Again, I'm just timid. I'm just timid. Well, timid. Go ahead and exchange that for what heaven has for you. Again, and it's not timidness. Right? It is not timidness. It is not fear. And it it is not false pride. Man, you wouldn't believe how many people say that. It's such a lie, too. It's such, again, I learned that I had exactly this. I was timid. I had all of the above. I was timid. I was fearful. I was anxious. And I was not confident. And I had a false pride being like, oh, I'm I'm too, I'm too, uh, um, what's that word? I'm. I don't know how to explain it, but I was like, yeah, that's not my lane. Like, that's, you know, that's somebody else's who has that type of personality. Um, Wrong. (laughs) Ah, Had to be rebuked. Um, Rebuke is good, guys. Rebuke is very good. Rebuke is good, especially from the Lord. Who knows? Whoo, who knows about that, right? (laughs) That's right. Again, he's given us power, people. Men and women of God, he's given you power. Everyone say power. 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 He has given us power. So to review that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. Yes. (laughs) Then we see the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost and perfect love. And let me just say this, his love is perfect. There is none like it. You cannot deny his love is perfect. Perfect love casts out all fear. What's going on in our hearts right now? Perfect love. All of us saved, born again. Perfect love is in our hearts right now. Isn't it awesome? Perfect love. And I had to say that to myself. Perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. I put my hand on my head. Perfect love casts out fear. My teacher's like, Josiah, put your hand on your head and say that. Perfect love casts out fear. And you can make a song out of it. Perfect love casts out all fear. Sorry, you could do all sorts of stuff. Um, Again, to get it in your system, it's by the watching and the renewing of our mind, the word. Again, so... If you got to say it a thousand times to renew yourself and wash that over you, do it. And that's what I had to do, so I can tell you. Um, He's given you a sound mind. A sound mind. Again, our minds should be fixed on things above. I don't have, we, I'm going to say we, because I would hope so, and I know you guys. We do not have broken or distracted minds. We have a sound mind in Yeshua's name. A sound mind in Yeshua's name. Again, I read this thing. It's by, um, it's by, Miss Ruth would read it at prayer. What's his name? He's, he, uh, and you were like, ooh, when she reads it. What's his name, Miss Ruth? Oswald Chambers. There was this quote, and he was like, worrying is evil. And he had this whole thing, and he said anxiety is of the devil. Worry is evil. And that's because instant we worry, the instant we have those thoughts come in our heads of worry and anxiety, that's us getting off the trusting in God and, um, and accepting his plan for our life and getting in what we're thinking is wrong or right. We have sound mind. We have perfect love. Again, whatever happened to grandma, whatever happened to Billy or Nelly or Willie, we have sound minds. We have sound mind no matter what. Again, power, love, and a sound mind in Yeshua's name. Sorry, I just got that. Power, love, and a sound mind in Yeshua's name. Power, love, and a sound mind in Yeshua's name. We could start like a little echo call and response thing. 
Again, build yourself up with what you need. Build yourself up with what you need. If you got to sing and read scripture, again, think of your body. Think of if your body is deficit on something, right? Let's say calcium. I don't even know if what I'm going to say is going to make sense because I'm not a doctor whatsoever in medical. I'm just thinking of something. Let's say you're deficit in calcium. But you're taking stuff for a different part of your body that you're already, the doctor said, oh, you're excellent in. But you keep taking that. And your, your, your calcium is always low. So if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with fear, depression, jealousy, whatever it may be, you need to be going to the word of God and reading and singing. And I tell people, I tell the worship team, some of them this. I say, what, what scripture are you standing on in this situation when they come for prayer? What, what are you standing on for this? What's, what worship are you listening to? Because there's a lot of worship songs. There's a lot of anointed men and women songwriters and leaders out there that are producing songs that are amazing. But listen to things that talk on that stuff and just power packed it with worship and prayer and the word and worship and prayer and the word. You know? And so, yeah, what scripture are we standing on? Again, especially... Um, no, I won't say that. I'll wait. <laughs> um, again, it's so easy in today's world. You got the internet. You got what? Find me scriptures that deal with this. It's so easy. They list it. I mean, so easy. You go look on a, a if you want to find music on a certain subject. You search it. Up oh, here's the songs about love. It's so easy. That's what I do for worship. Oh, songs about this. Songs about that. And you just put that stuff in. Listen to it, pop that CD in. Who listens to CDs? I know some of you guys do, but um, you got Spotify now, right? Pop your playlist in and be listening to those songs about love, casting out that fear out of you. The word, listen to this, I just thought about this. The word works, right? Everyone knows that. The word of God works, but you have to work the word. We have to work the word. We got to be speaking it. We got to be reading it. We got to be writing it. Who knows, you know, typing is good, but when you write stuff down, again, writing stuff down, you know, write what you want to come to pass. It's, it's just something that you can't, it's really something that, you know, typing just doesn't have that same effect. Um, Psalms 107.20 says, he sent his word and they healed and delivered them. Healed and delivered them by his word. So his word works. Everyone say the word works. Just want to make sure you're listening. And then you're probably like this. There's probably these type of people. Josiah, what does any of this have to do with soul winning? I already know this. a few people. It's all good. This is a safe place for now until I get you guys soul winning. Just kidding. Um. What does this have to do with sharing the gospel? I'm tired. Ugh. It has everything to do with it. Everything to do with soul winning and sharing the gospel. Because you got to keep the main thing the main thing. And to keep the main thing the main thing, in order to keep the main thing the main thing, is by keeping yourself on the potter's wheel. By living a consecrated life, setting yourself apart for the master's work. Amen. And no matter what your soul goal is or how many people you've, you know, won over to the Lord, if you've never done it before, again, if you're dabbling in garbage, if you're dabbling in nonsense and things, taking up your time, and things that contradict the word and what you believe and what you're standing on, you're not going to care about any of this, any of what I'm saying, anything about what the word says. It's going to go in one ear and out the other. And you won't care about souls or the harvest or these people that are not going to heaven, that are lost and need a savior. 
you're not going to care. Yeah, not going, it's not going to affect you in any way because, again, it's by the word of God. Again, like I said earlier, the word of God washes and renews you. So you, every day and night, again, I've been doing this now more than ever. Day and night, you should be in the word. You should be in some sort of prayer. You should be in some sort of worship. And if you've got to multitask, you multitask. Because the Lord told me that, I'm done with your excuses. You worship me in the car. And I was like, oh, yes, sir. And you know what I do when I go to work? I have my playlist of my worship. Because I, I say this to the worship team as well. Is I say, you better be doing 100 times more at home than what you do up here. 100 times more. No matter where you're at. No matter what you're doing, you better be doing that at home. Because what you see up here is a representation of what you're doing at home. And if you're not doing anything at home and just doing it here... It's going to show, and I'm going to be the first to see it. So everyone say, I love the word. I love the word. Um, 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 5 says, And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom. Again, Amplified says, using clever words. But they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through us, of me, and of his power stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom and rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. You see that word demonstration. Everyone say demonstration. demonstration. Who remembers the first time you saw the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit? In your life, someone else's life, <laughs> for the first time. It, we all can, we all probably have something and yeah, go on and on. But a beautiful demonstration of the Holy Spirit is the prayer of salvation and seeing someone be saved. That is such a beautiful representation and demonstration. Seeing an altar call be given, seeing these people come up that have been battling, lost, whatever. They're coming up. They're surrendering. They're, they're, they're putting everything aside. The enemy beating down their door and being like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. They fought that, and they've come up and wanted to receive this. That's, that's so beautiful and so amazing. Whether it's on the streets, whether you're praying for a family member or a friend, that's a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And them, seeing them give their hearts to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Again, but that only happens when the gospel of Christ is declared and shared. That is only the only way we can see that demonstration. Again, there was a time in England, um, Billy Graham was preaching. I love Billy Graham. Um, such an awesome man of God. And there was masses of people there. You guys all know this. Masses of people filling the stadiums each night he was there, or each day he was there. And he had this certain song playing that he would play on every altar call. It was one of his favorite songs. There was that one and there was another one. Um, but yes, you're right. And thousands of people got saved that night. The next morning, reporters want to touch on it, right? And they're like, in today's news, we just, um, the Billy Graham has like, done this like whole like thing or whatever they're just bashing it whatever I'm not gonna even get into it but they start saying but you know the only reason why those people got saved it was the music the music was condemning them to come and they felt like they had to go up right so Billy Graham's helpers come up to him and they're like hey you see this and he's like you know what no song tonight he goes to the next altar call and he's like we're not gonna do a song tonight I'm just gonna call the people up say the prayer and that's how we're going to do it tonight. So they do it. Thousands of people got saved. Thousands of people went up. The reporters the next day, it was too quiet. That's why they came up. That's why. They came up because it was too quiet. What in the world? Uh, again, it's the gospel being delivered and giving the people to call on his name, the name of Yeshua. Again, it has nothing to do with music. It has nothing to do with lights, or it's the word of God being proclaimed out. 
that gets people saved. No bells and whistles here. Just the word of God. Amen. So what I want to do. Ooh. Again, like going back to this too before I go into this. Washing your mind with the word of God day and night. Because what you're asking the Lord, you know when I said, you know, ask God big. Ask him for big. What you're asking, what you're thinking makes a huge difference. Makes a huge, huge difference. We need you. God needs you to be asking and thinking the right things. So if you're thinking of the things that are lovely, that are pure, that are holy, if you're speaking the, the word of God, you're going to be asking the right things. Asking, thinking and asking. Ask of me and I will give you the heathen for your inheritance. And in the Amplified, it says, ask of me and I will give you the nations. I will give you the nations. Again, what are you asking God? What are you thinking? What are you asking God? What are you thinking? Again, so, I want to go through this with you guys. This is going to be the fun part. And I might ask for a couple of volunteers. So I want to show you. Another thing, too, before I go into this is I have a sign-up sheet out there. And if I want a huge group, if we do this, I want a huge group to go out and possibly do a class and then go out on the streets and do soul winning. And you know what? This is the time now. The day of salvation is today. And it's not tomorrow. It's not two years from now. And again, we're going to pray too after because I want any, again, I'll share my testimony before we pray too. Anything that is tying you down from doing this, I believe you do this, you will see breakthroughs in your life. Because this, this I'm telling you, I saw it in my life. I saw the blessings of God. I saw God setting me free from all this stuff I didn't even know I was being tied down with, especially with religion, with things I'm like, I'm not a religious person. And you're like, oh, yeah, it was. And, again, I believe this. I'm believing with you guys. I'm believing that each one of us need to do this. We're called to do this as Christians, as children of God. And so I put a sign-up sheet out there. Again, pray, but take that step and sign up. Take that step. Again, I'm only doing it if I got a big group because we're a big group here. I see a lot of people. And, again, I can touch someone. I can speak into someone's life that Miss Carolyn can't. And she can speak into someone's life that I can't. So be like, oh, they got enough people. No, some people I might not be able to speak into or have that open door to get in there, right? So it's important that all of us, all of us are needed. All of us are qualified, Again, all of us are qualified to do this. And if you're thinking something else, it is a lie from the pit of hell. Um, so I want Sean. Where's Sean at? I'm going to have him volunteer with me. <laughs> so he's going to be somebody on the street. You can be right there. He's going to be somebody on the street, and I'm going to walk you guys through this, and I'm going to give you different scenarios. So I just want to read this first. So, starting at the top, has anyone ever told you that God loves you and that he has a wonderful plan for your life? I have a real quick but important question to ask you. If you were to die this very second, do you know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would go to heaven? If yes, great. Why would you say that? Um, and it will go skip down a little bit. I'll talk about that later. Let me quickly share with you what the Holy Bible reads. It reads, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible also reads, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you're a whosoever, right? Right, Billy? Right. Of course you are. All of us are. I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. Lord, bless Billy and his family with long and healthy life. Jesus, make yourself real to him and do a quick work in his heart. Billy has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Again, you do the prayer. If you would like to receive the gift, Billy, if you would like to receive the gift that God has for you today, say this after me with your heart and lips out loud. 
Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Wash me. So, so on and so forth. So I wanted to show you guys something. This is how I would act towards. So there's two different ways of this. There's when you be talking to Christians, talking to people that are in the middle, and talking to people that are want nothing to do with this. So I'm going to pretend like he's a Christian. So when I ask you, you'll say yes, and then I'll show you. So I'm at a grocery store, right? I see Sean here. <laughs> right, good, huh? Remember what I said, you stick to the script. No matter what, again, and I'll show you a testimony about that too, stick to the script. So I see him, right? Excuse me, has anyone ever told you God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he'll be like, oh, yeah, of course, of course. And you'll start getting, especially for me, I start being like, oh, okay, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, great. Um, I have a real quick but very important question to ask you. If you were to die this very second, do you know beyond a shadow of doubt that you would go to heaven? 90%. So, yeah, that's tip, the typical response is, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Great, that's awesome. Don't be like, well, okay, like, yes, great, awesome. Well, let me quickly share, so then uh, I forgot. Right before, since he says he's a Christian and he knows where he's going, this is what you're going to ask. Well, let me, um, uh, let me ask you this. From a scale of one to five, how red hot on fire for the Lord, winning other souls, attending church, would you say you are? Definitely strong two and three. <laughs> that's a typical answer. It's two and three. I don't know why. Um, and who knows the verse? God doesn't want lukewarm. He spits them out. So you want to be red hot on fire or not at all? So if he says that, what do you do? Keep reading the script. And some will say five. Oh, I'm five. Um, if they say that, good. Then I'll show you what to do after that. So then you'll just keep saying the prayer with him. Let me quickly share with you what the Holy Bible reads. I'll read the scriptures to him. And then, um, then you know what I did? I'll keep going. I said, you know what I do? I don't even ask. Do never ask to be like, can I pray with you? They'll be like, no, I'm good. I'm busy. You just pray. This is your chance. You're holding the dinner in front of him, right? So, Billy, if you would like to receive the gift that God has for you today, say this after me with your heart and lips out loud. Another thing that's really good, too, to get them more engaged, if you're, like, far and like this, you kind of want to do this. Like, if you start thinking, they're like, oh, I don't, I go like this. If you would like to receive the gift that God has for you today, say this after me with your heart and lips out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Wash, me Wash me and cleanse me. And cleanse me. Set me free. Set me free. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you that you died for me. That you died for me. I believe that you are risen, I believe you have risen from, the dead from the dead and that you're coming back again, and that you are coming back again for me. For me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost. Give me a passion for the lost. A hunger for the things of God. A hunger for the things of God. And a holy boldness. And a holy boldness to preach the gospel. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I am forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm on my way to heaven. Because I have Jesus in my heart. Because I have Jesus in my heart. So he just said the prayer. Give him a round of applause. He's saved. He's a part of the family. Woo! Then what you do is I, again, that part is so exciting. So I go, awesome, Billy, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I tell you today that all your sins are forgiven. Always remember to run to God and not from God because he loves you and has a great plan for your life. And then at that point, I go, um, are you attending a church at all or you have a church family? Around. Okay, well, um, can I get your name and number? I'll give you the sure. place to church. And you give them the church. And then, um, I, then this, I'm going all the way, guys, so bear with me. So then if he gives me that, we do that, I go, awesome. Well, Billy, do you need any prayer? Do you have a prayer request or do you need healing or for your family or friends? What can I pray for you about? Yeah, my, my home, I need, some, I, need some, I need roof, I need roof. Okay, awesome. So then what you'll do is, <clears throat> man, yeah, what you'll do is, I just pray for them, and um, I have them, this is the limit thing I do, I'll have them pray for themselves after. 
And then after that, I go, well, have you ever been baptized um, by the Holy Spirit? They'd be like, what is that? That's mostly the thing. What is that? I go, well, today is your day, Billy. I said, let's do that right now. And they're usually like, yeah, yeah. So then I pray for them to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Again, I'm not getting much detail because we'll do that hopefully another time. And no, then do now. do now, right? <laughs> don't rob me. Um, don't rob. But let's say he got he got it and he received the Holy Spirit. That's all the way are those steps. So did everyone understand that? Everyone got that? So that's that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, he's saved. <laughs> he's changed forever. He's a new creature. <laughs> Amen. A new name. He's got a new name. His name's Nilly. Um, <laughs> Willie. <clears throat> awesome. Um, so I want to share with you guys a couple of other things um, of my testimony with soul winning. So, um, what happened is when I started school, I had never soul wins, never led anybody in a prayer of salvation, never, none of that. Didn't even know how to do it or how to orchestrate, nothing. And I'm actually a very timid person. I'm very introverted. <laughs> I don't, if, if I don't have to be around people, I would rather be, you know, by myself or, um, or like, um, but let me tell you this, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit moving inside of me to do what I do. It is only by the Holy Spirit. Because if not, if I was just little Josiah, I would want to be sitting in the back and not doing anything. But it is by the presence of the Lord that has moved me and worked through me and strengthened me. Um, so I came into this not knowing anything. When I started, it was in the middle of COVID when I started school. And we couldn't go on the streets because everyone was on lockdown. We couldn't do anything. Couldn't go to nursing homes, couldn't go to hospitals. So we, what we did is we got the phone book and we just started calling. And we would read the prayer um, and do it that way. And then we would do social media. So I would stand and be like, hey, everybody, my name is Josiah. And I just want to, you know, we just do the whole thing. And we say, hey, if you, say this, if you said this prayer with your heart and lips, you know, comment and let me know your testimony. Or like this video. And then that's how we would soul win for a while there. And I was like, I can get with this. Because I was scared to death. Because I saw all these people like, I went on the streets. I went on a bus. And I got the whole bus saved. And I was like, oh, my gosh, no. I was like, my eyes were like a deer in headlights. Like, oh, no, no, no. And they were like, well, it's COVID. So we're going to be here. And we're going to soul win on the phone. I was like, yeah. It's like, Lord, you've answered my prayers. That's how bad I was. I was praying against not going. And um, because <laughs> I don't like talking to strangers. Now I do. I have no problem. But like then I was like, don't, uh, I don't know. I was awkward. So they tell us we're going on the streets a couple months later. <laughs> and that day I dreaded. I was like, oh. And the first, we only went to two, ti two times in for on the streets and they were little like suburbs and nobody would answer and I would be like <laughs> that's how I would be and <laughs> um and so I this day this was the third time officially us going on the streets it was Super Bowl weekend when the Super Bowl was here in Tampa Bay and it was a Friday and they were having masses of parties and stuff and before we go soul winning we all meet together and we pray, we worship, our leader um, encourages us, gives us a word, we get, we stir ourselves up, we build up our spirit men, it's awesome, those days were always so powerful, and we pray for one another, we go over everything, we get our routes, and then we all carpool together, as we were driving, as we were driving, I was sitting there, and I started getting very, like, sick feeling, and I was getting this fearfulness creeping in, I'm like, am I doing this? Am I doing this? Because I knew it was going to be. We're driving in. Literally, you couldn't even drive. Super Bowl weekend, the Super Bowl was there. It's crazy. You couldn't even park. They had to drop us off and just sit in the road and just kind of dozy all in, you know, just shimmy through the other cars. 
like, I'm getting off. I'm like, I'm not doing this. And, I, and then you, you couldn't even walk. You're banging into people, just people who are drunk, you know, dressed crazy, just cussing, smoking, all this uh, crazy stuff. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing I'm, I was literally like this. My hands were clenched, and I'm walking. And you, the people in my group, they're like, has anyone ever told you that God loves you? And I'm like, not doing this. I'm walking by them. I'm like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> and um, so Giovanni went to school with me. And shout out to him if he's not watching. But so he, <laughs> he was the opposite of me. He was going out. He was doing it, you know, no problem. I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And um, um, I was the total opposite. So I, I remember I went up to my first lady, and I was like, I was like, ma'am, ma'am, <clears throat> ma'am. <clears throat> and I was like. Literally, it was bad. I was like, Josiah. And I was like, has anyone to- told you that God loves you? And that, and she's like, huh? I'm like, I wanted to cry. This is how bad it was. And Giovanni comes over. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like, I'm like, has anyone ever told you that God? And I start the whole prayer. And she says the prayer. Or she says, um, she listens to me giving out all the scriptures, and then all of a sudden she's like, um, would you go faster? I'm like, and I was like, and I was like, ma'am, I gotta go. So I leave. And my leader is like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah. And there, he's like, oh, he's like, okay. He's like, um, I'm like, he starts designating us to people. And I'm like, he's like, you see that guy over there? Just like, you got him. Go ahead. So he's like, you got him? And I was like, who do I got? He's like, that guy over there. There was this guy. And he was massive. (laughs) Scary. (laughs) Tall, like, I was even looking like this. And he's selling, I can't say the words, but something Tom Brady. Selling shirts, being like, it was something vulgar towards Tom Brady. And he's like, yeah, come and get it. Come and get your shirts, yeah. And he's like, th- like selling them left and right. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I go, I'm like, I'm just, I was standing there. And I was like, hmm. literally, this is how bad it is. And a lot of people have this. And I remember st- I started getting the thoughts, you don't need, you don't need to, you don't need to save him. You're going to make yourself look like a fool. You, you're not qualified for this. This is for other people who have this type of personality, all that stuff I shared with you. You just need to go back to the car, wherever that car was. You need to go back to the car. And this is the part where, I'm telling you because I see it in so many people, there was this time where the fear got so strong it became evil. I felt darkness. My hairs on my neck stood up. And I felt the voices so heavily, like, it was weird. So around me, and I, and I remember I started getting angry, being like, why are we here? This is ridiculous. And I started, it started turning into anger. And that fear and the anger binded me and, and, and held me down where it was so, I felt like someone put a thousand pounds on me. And I couldn't get up, and I was stuck like this. And I was about to go back to the car, and then Giovanni came up to me, and he was like, he was like, are you all right? And I was like, I was like, no, no, I'm not okay. And I was like, I was like, I'm going back to the car. And I said, I can't do, I can't do this. This is too much. And he was telling me some things, and I remember the last thing he said, he's like, this could be their last day to meet Jesus. This could be their last day. This, is the, this could be their last opportunity. I remember I was like, whoa. I was like, and right after that, the Holy Spirit told me, rebuke this voice right now. Get up, because I was sitting down. Get up. Get your took us over to that something Tom Brady guy. And you win him to me. And so I said, I rebuke you fear and anxiety In the name of Jesus, I pray for a holy boldness and confidence 
that you have placed inside of me as a son of God, as a man of righteousness, as a man of God. Satan, you lose. You do not win. You have no power or authority over me or my mind. I cast you out far from myself and for this place and each and every person that is here because they are going to meet Jesus today. And I went out and I won him to the Lord. And he said the prayer. And he went to church that next week. And um, this other guy, too, I went and I was sharing. This was the next week after. And the Holy Spirit was testing me at this point. This big guy opens the door. What? And I was like. And I remember I went. <laughs> and I went back to, has anyone ever told you that guy? <laughs> And he has a gun just right here. Because we went to some very rough places. I mean, they'd sent us to places that needed Jesus. And the Holy Spirit and the Father. Um, you hear gunshots banging off. Just the smells and oh, all this stuff. So I'm like, I start saying the prayer. And I remember he was like, I, I didn't know if he was going to shoot me. But I had, Jamal was with me, so you always go in pairs. So I was just like. So I start reading the prayer, and something told me, just stop. Just, he's not going to. Because you, you get this voice, he's not going to do it. Just, this is a waste of time. That is such a lie. You keep reading the script. Keep reading. I, kept, I keep reading the script, right? Let me quickly share with you what the Holy Bible reads. I'm like, what's your name? I'm named Tyrone. I'm like, Tyrone, I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. And so I'm saying the prayer with him, and I have it covering my face. And I'm shaking, but I said the whole thing, and, I, and he was quiet. And I was like, and I'm looking, and he's like, he's like, <gasps> and he starts crying. And I remember I was like, what did I do? He's like, what have I done? <laughs> and I'm like, what have I done? I'm like, I just got this man saved is what I've done. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, he is going to heaven now. So he was like, he was like, and then I was like, and I just laid my hand on him and I started praying for him. And after that, he was like, he's like, thank you so much, bro. He started giving me a hug and I was like, oh. Um, yes, so, and my last story is I went to this one lady's house and I remember I was exhausted. Nobody, everyone was just cussing me out left and right. I was like, I'm done. I'm getting tired. I'm getting exhausted. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to knock on one more door. I'm like, oh, fine. So I pray. I'm like, Holy Spirit, thank you. I get myself right. And I knock on the door. And this lady comes out. And she's like, who are you? And I start saying the prayer. And she's like, no, wait, who are you? And at that point, I'm like, oh, I'm Josiah. Um, the, the Lord told me to come and knock on your door um, to pray with you. Um, and she was like, and she had this, like, like she saw a ghost or something on her face. And I was like, are you all right? And I was like, is everything okay? And she's like, I was about to kill myself. And my children are in the other room. And I prayed to the Lord. I said, this, if this is not the end, I need help. I need help. And I, she never had been saved. She went to church as a little girl. But now she attends church. She serves. Her children are turned to 180. And I'm telling you, it's just the stories and, the, and everything. It's just, it just, you can't deny it. You can't. Nothing is worth more than those people you win to the Lord and what you, what you share with them. Nothing more. Nothing like it. Um, so, again, I know that was a lot. Um, but remember, today is the day of salvation. Today is that day. Today is the day of miracles. Today is the day of breakthroughs. Today is the day that the Spirit is moving. The Spirit is breathing. The Spirit of God is upon this earth. Again, don't wait. Don't 
Again, sign up. I'm, sign up. Procrastination, again, is the thief of time. Avoid it. Overcome it. Eliminate it. In every area of your life. Um, because, again, this, like I said earlier, this will bring breakthrough on your life. It has brought breakthrough in my life. I've never been the same after it. And, again, I thank so much for the school that I went to. People can think whatever they want, but Pastor Rodney and that church has changed me forever. And, again, I can't deny it, and I love that man of God. I love Pastor Donica. I love that ministry. They have poured and instilled so much into me. They've been there to talk to me, the teachers and leaders and pastors, and have brought me to a whole new level. I have never thought that I would ever be going on with the Lord spiritually, with the power of God, knowing, I spent knowing my authority in the Lord, knowing the power that I have. It's like knowing I got angels to charge over stuff. I've got them, all the angels are sitting there waiting Again, my leader told me this at school. They're like, just like you got angels that are waiting, waiting up there for you to charge them. And some of them never are used. They're sitting there. So knowing that authority we have as men and women of God, the authority of the believer, the authority of every man and woman of God. And I want to say this prayer and. I want to say this prayer and there's a song I want to play and I want to do something a little different because I want chains to be broken for anyone leaves today. I want fear to leave. I want anxiety and worry to go and never come back in you. I'm here to fight for you. Every time I'm on worship, I'm here to fight for you. The songs that we sing are not just lyrics, they're not just words, they're not just music. They're the proclamation of his word, of who he was, who he is, and who he is, and what he's doing. And I don't want people leaving out of here the same. I don't want people leaving here still tied down with this, this again, religious, religious spirits and traditions are a real thing. They are a real thing, and that's the biggest thing that we saw, especially in school, that were tying people down from doing this. Of course, there was fear. Of course, there was all this other stuff. But it was mostly of religion and tradition. And there's many lies to soul winning of like, oh, well, they're not discipled and all this. And what does that mean, that we don't win souls then? What? Again, I can't even go into that. But it's such a cop-out and such excuses Again, there's value. Yes, people do need to be discipled. Yes. Plug them into a church. Yes. But, again, I always thought about this too. When somebody wouldn't receive when I gave to them, again, the biggest thing for me, it would hurt me, you know, personally. Be like, oh, man, that really stung. That hurt. They're not denying me. They deny Jesus. And you know what? They might have not accepted it at that time, but I planted a seed. And you know what? Somebody's going to water it. Somebody else down the road is going to care for it and nurture it, but I planted the seed. And that's all I can do. And that's the best I can do. So I wanted to say a prayer. And I want us, after the prayer, I want the song to play. It's this song that has touched me ever since I started school. When they sing this at school, I was flat on my face. Our snot, just, ugh, the snot. And I was... Because I wanted, I had enough of being dignified. I had enough of taking the bare minimum of the power of God, of comfortability. I had enough of it. And this was a step of soul winning. So they played the song, and it's Make Room. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. 
And then the bridge is, shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. And they were saying that at school, and I was on my face. And I was like, yes, Lord, shake off any religion that I had, any tradition, any, any man-made-up thing that is tying me down, that is wanting to chain me up, wanting to hinder me from walking out the full calling and anointing on my life right now. Break it off right now. And that's what I want for each one of you guys. So right now, when we pray, Lord, thank you, Lord, for giving us the revelation that soul winning is not an event. It is a lifestyle. Lord, give us the revelation that soul winning is not a program. It is a passion. Lord, break our hearts for the lost. Let us see people the way you see people. Take out our stony heart and put a heart of flesh. Give us the revelation that if we love Jesus, if we love him with all of our heart, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Father, do whatever it takes. Do whatever you need to do by your spirit and by and with your power to give us revelation of the lost and why you came to earth and that is to seek and to save that which was lost to seek and to save that which was lost and Lord right now every man, every woman here every child, everyone watching on live stream I thank you that you are giving each one of us, each individual here and watching, a holy boldness and confidence spoke in the book of Acts. It is your portion. It is your portion, your spirit that is within us living and breathing. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your spirit. Pray this after with me. Lord, fill me with more boldness. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be what you want me to be. I'm a proclaimer of the gospel. I preach the gospel. I will not back down. I will fulfill everything you've called me to do. By the grace of God. Amen. And right now, dear Jesus, we just, any form of religion, any form or ties of tradition or, or any form of anxiety or voices of fear or doubt or depression or hurt or jealousy or the flesh that is eating us up from the inside out, Lord. I just pray today when we step foot, I want to invite after this prayer everyone to come up here and we're going to worship. Look towards east. We're going to worship and we're going to sing this. We're going to proclaim this forth right now because, Lord, we are not playing church. We are not here to play around. This is life and death. These are people that are hurt and lost and that they need a Savior They need to experience your love. They need to experience your presence. They need to, their brokenness needs to be mended. And they're searching and they're longing and they're desiring and they're looking here and there with this person, with this situation. And they're empty. Day in and day out, they are empty. And again, if we don't believe this, if we don't do this this stuff, these things, We can't expect anybody else to. So first and foremost, foremost, Lord, we ask you to fill us from the inside out, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, that your fire burn in us, the zeal and the passion to hit those streets, to hit our grocery stores, to, to, to speak to our family and to our friends. Let it not be an option Let it not be a waste of time. Let it not be an inconvenience. 
Let it be our goal and mission. Again, let it be our lifestyle to do this. Again, your way is better. Your way is higher. Your way is above all. Again, take us higher with you, Lord. Move us higher. Let the cares of this world, let the, let the lies of this world have no hold on us. We look to, above, to you above, Lord. Our eyes are towards Jesus. We are turning our eyes to you, Jesus. And right now, as I'm speaking, because I already am, I'm feeling it, the Holy Spirit's bringing to my remembrance right now that there is a spirit of tradition and religion that is wanting to hinder your people right now as I've been talking, that is wanting to whisper and rear its ugly head right now as I've been speaking. And right now, by the power in me, by Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you spirit of religion and tradition, you spirit <clears throat> of lies and man manipulation that is wanting to take hold of these people right now, that is wanting to bound them up and take them farther away from the full, from the full anointing and calling they have on their lives because they have it, each and every one of them. I pray right now to break loose from them by the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. By the sound of my voice in Jesus' name, leave right now. Leave, 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 and never return right now by the, in the name of Jesus. You have no place here. You cannot dwell here. In the name of Jesus, I am standing here right now to tell you to go. Because I know you're here. I know you've been whispering. I know you've been in people's hearts right now. I know you've been trying to work. Go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Rosho Kodia na 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 bo kosho tori ya da na ma. Benia na 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 kosho tori ya da na na bo kosho tori ya ba ba ba. Rosho Kodia ma ba ba keshe ya na na. Benia na 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 no kosho tori ya ba ba ba. Rosho Kodia de de keshi te de ma ba bo to. Benia na na ba be kiri ya na 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 bo kosho tori ya da da. Benia na 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 bo kosho tori ya da da. Bo kosho tori ya da 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 da. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In the house of the Lord, there is joy. There is no sadness. There is no despair or sorrow. We're trading our garments of sorrow for garments of praise right now in the name of Jesus. Because we know where we're going. We know who we serve. We know the God that we serve. We know our heavenly father. So we thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for the power that is in your name. Thank you for the power that is placed in your name when we speak it forth. Demons tremble at the sound of it. We are your soldiers, Lord. We are your warriors. We are arming ourselves with the armor of God, ready for battle, because that is what this is. This is a battle, and we already know you've got the victory, Lord. You have it, and we are going to carry it out with you, because if you can't work in us, you'll find somebody else, and we don't want that. We want to be used. We don't want to be forgotten. We don't want to be left in the dust. We want to be where you're going. And it's not worth keeping religion in us. It's not worth keep holding on to tradition in man's ways. It's not worth it. Our eyes are on things.
eyes above me. Our eyes are not made above. Lord, we make room for you right now. Lifting up your hands in the sign of surrender. So, Lord, we surrender right now to you. We get out of the way. We be quiet and we do what you want to do. You're going to say what you want us to say. We're going to go where you want us to go. Nothing more, nothing less. Every burden, every weight, everything that we've been carrying, every yoke of bondage is gone, is broken. It cannot stay, it cannot manifest anymore right now in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we make room for you to do whatever you want to do. about the person next to you or beside you. Whatever you need to do to lift up your hands, to raise your voice, to pray, to kneel down. 